Buford always reminded me of a beautiful woman who needed her face washed. Then Henry started, and, and how he did it is, is beyond me because you know that he had a lot of sleepless nights. You just go down downtown any one night, try to find a place to park. You can see what all of this done, and this is the one who did it right here, and I was very, very fortunate to have had the opportunity to work with him. And I can tell you one thing, as a businessman downtown Beaufort and a property owner, People like us were very, very happy that Henry Chambers had this vision. He saved the town of Beaufort. When Henry Carroll Chambers was growing up in Beaufort in the 1930s and 1940s, the city's waterfront was the heart of its economic life. Fishermen returned there with their daily catches. Merchants from Bay Street and other parts of Beaufort went to the docks to receive goods shipped from Savannah. But by the time Chambers was elected mayor of his hometown in 1969, the fishing industry was in decline and some Bay Street merchants were boarding up their shops or moving away from the town center. Meanwhile, the marsh below the docks became a dumping ground for discarded tires and street debris. It was a derelict mess. In the years preceding Chambers' tenure, former Mayor Monroe Key proposed removing the docks, filling in the marsh, and building a road to parallel Bay Street. The project would provide downtown merchants with parking to augment the lot near the marina on the waterfront's western end. It would cost $300,000 to $400,000. Those plans had not progressed very far, however. We decided that wasn't the thing to do, so I hired them. Um, Lockwood Green from Spartanburg to come down and uh, do a survey. Chambers had a grander vision for downtown revitalization. It was inspired by the grandfather who raised him, Hal Pollitzer, who at the turn of the 20th century was a representative for the South Carolina Electric Company and helped run wire that electrified Beaufort. I guess the idea for the waterfront park came from my grandfather who, when I was a little boy, I used to go with um, a woman named Sarah Rose and sit on the waterfront. And my grandfather gave me the river. Chambers' plan for a seven-acre park was not universally embraced, however. Had a lot of opposition mm -hmm. because its magnitude grew as we as we planned it, we decided we would add this, add that, add the other. And uh, it got to 5.3 million. No telling what it would cost today if, in fact, it could be constructed. I doubt with the tree huggers that we could, we could build it today. The city addressed environmental concerns of the day with a unique cantilever design. Instead of filling in marsh, the park would be built atop a bridge structure placed behind a seawall so that the tide could still flow in and out. But there was no telling how much all of this engineering would cost or where the money would come from. Chambers looked to Washington, D.C. And of course, at that time, President Nixon had put in revenue sharing for the community and Buford was getting about $250,000 a year. And Council agreed with me to save that money. That would give the city about a million dollars to start with. Chambers scrounged up other funding wherever he could. He was among the local leaders encouraging State Senator Jim Waddell of Beaufort and State Representative Wilton Graves of Bluffton to push legislation that would allow Beaufort County to reappraise property and thereby increase its tax base. He also lobbied Governor Robert McNair to direct nearly $2.5 million in state funds to the project. And for the remainder, the city hired a 24-year-old city manager, Ed Duryea, to help secure grants to fund the park and other key infrastructure projects during Chambers' tenure. There's money in Washington sitting in all these agencies. The agency head want to spend it. All they need is someone to ask them. 
Chambers took on a very personal role in the fundraising effort, for a while making almost weekly visits to D.C. to meet with Senator Strom Thurmond and James Watt, an assistant secretary in the U.S. Department of Interior's Bureau of Outdoor Recreation. Chambers said his frequent travel to the nation's capital was never an issue for Bufortonians because he financed his trips himself. However, his overtures to Washington made many of Beaufort County's small government Republicans uneasy. Chambers developed a simple retort to those who had a problem with seeking federal largesse. In 1862, the Yankees took everything out of Beaufort. And if I could get it back, I was going to get every dime I could get back. To assist him in his request in Washington and to build support in Beaufort, Chambers enlisted his alma mater. I had Clemson University come down and do a study for us, 50th Studio of Architecture. They spent a year and built a model for me that I could take to Washington and present it. And I took it to uh, Thurman's office, and he called Watt to come over. And uh, Watt looked at the plans, and he said, well, anybody that can have that kind of vision, we're going to help you. Though it was not formally adopted, the Clemson plan became a working model for revitalization. The city hired another Clemson graduate, Robert E. Marvin of Walterboro, a nationally known landscape architect, to design a formal site plan. It included a 100-slip marina and store, pavilion, amphitheater, gardens, playground, and farmer's market. Construction began even before financing was in place, but the money began flowing in too, and not all of it was from D.C. All but two landowners along the Beaufort waterfront donated their land and riparian rights, a value of almost $500,000, and the Bank of Beaufort, headed by brothers G.G. and Joab Dowling, provided bridge loans that kept the project moving forward. Chambers still encountered some resistance on city council, John Griffin and Stratton Demosthenes generally supported the mayor, but Don Fisher and Thomas Logan occasionally opposed. At least twice, Chambers had to break two two ties to keep the waterfront park viable, Beaufort Gazette columnist David Lauderdale wrote in 2017. Despite that opposition, as the project was about to be completed in 1981, council decided Waterfront Park would be named for Mayor Chambers. Not posthumously, not years after the fact. Now. Chambers' reaction? I cried. Yeah. Oh, I was quite taken oh, because the person that uh, made the motion was Don Fisher, who had opposed everything. But here it was, ready to open, and uh, he made the motion. I didn't have any animosity toward any of them. Uh, they were voting the conscience, and I could not deliver a document saying we're going to get this money. But I had Watt, who was Secretary of Interior, and Thurman both telling me it was coming. And uh, I believed them. I, I lived for almost seven years on the marina on my boat, and I could see the use of the park. And it's busy all the time. And when the realtors started taking the clients down there and showing it to them, I knew we had arrived. But what it did, it gave that man who lived on Duke Street, or lived in the back part of town, seven acres on the water and they had never had access before. Mayor and council, not me, together uh, changed the budget of Buford and changed the sleepy little town that it was to what it is today. And I think we've got a pretty healthy downtown. I think the park proved to me that Buford can do anything it wants to do if it has the leadership and the desire 